Tolerance is the ability to accept and coexist with ideas or actions that one disagrees with. Political tolerance is therefore described as the ability to accept and work with those who possess political opinions and ideologies which one thinks are wrong or disagrees with. Hello and welcome to the Political Opinion Podcast, where every opinion is given equal footing and political tolerance and debate are given their proper attention in a world where both are on the decline. Today's episode is a bit different, as it covers an issue very close to home for this podcast, the differing views on political tolerance. One of the main objectives that I have had with this podcast has been to maintain as close to absolute neutrality as possible, meaning giving equal time to explain and compare diverging opinions. On this topic, however, I believe it is important to mention that I cannot clearly remain neutral on the basis that one of the core aims of this podcast is to promote political tolerance. The content within this episode will be unbiased and will cover fairly each side of the debate without trying to prove which one is right, but I think that it is very important to note that I am very openly biased on this matter. However, I will do my best to prevent my own bias leaking into the episode. With that being said, today's episode will aim to explore the different opinions on whether or not political tolerance should exist and how important it is. This episode will be based around purely the acceptance of other ideologies and views, while Friday's episode will cover the practical side to this regarding opinions on if different groups and political parties should work together. I will begin with the arguments that political tolerance should exist and should be practised, and will then move on to the counter-arguments opposed to political tolerance, with a comparison at the end. So the arguments that political tolerance should be allowed and should be supported most revolve around the idea that politics is an almost perfectly subjective realm of thought, and as such, it is inherently wrong to reject other political ideas from your own on the basis that doing so assumes your view is the only correct view, but given the nature of politics, it is argued that there is no definitive one true idea or set of ideas, hence an ideology. Assuming your own views are more merited or superior to others is an outright rejection of equality and creates a depiction of narrow-mindedness to some people. If you reject other opinions, you therefore have to claim that your own is more valid, and given that there is no one true answer, you are thereby claiming your own views to be worth more than other people, creating a form of almost psychological hierarchy between differing ideologies. Furthermore, it is argued that tolerance is key to promote political debate. Political ideologies and ideas exist as a means to be tested and compared to each other, and through this, compromise and decisions can be made, and it is only through tolerance that this can happen. If you reject tolerance and reject other views, you cannot debate politics, as debates are based on the assumption that both sides have a case of validation, which, if you are intolerant, you reject that idea. Furthermore, in cases of extreme self-virtue, it can lead to people assuming only their ideology is right. This is most often seen with liberals in their rejection of other forms of ideology, and in the most extreme form can lead to generalisations, such as claiming that other ideologies are racist, sexist, and involve other negative qualities. And often this leads to other groups claiming that liberals can be less tolerant than the groups that they claim are intolerant, based on the fact that they outright reject every other form of ideology. Linking on to that, Political tolerance is a form of tolerance. So you cannot claim to be tolerant if you aren't politically tolerant. And therefore arguments that you are essentially rejecting other ideologies, claiming they are intolerant, is hypocritical because you yourself are being intolerant. Moving on from this, a lack of political tolerance prevents the advancement of political ideas. Essentially, if you never accept new views, you will be stuck where you are now. If you reject different views, you cannot develop new political ideas. Political ideology and ideas are constantly changing, and over time they shift from generation to generation, from time period to time period, they are often unrecognisable. Conservatism now, for example, is extremely different to conservatism 200 years ago. And if you reject political tolerance, you cannot involve the advancement of new views, and we will be stuck where we are now. Furthermore, there are so many political ideas that it is often impossible to reject every other viewpoint from your own, and in doing so, you are greatly constricting the realm of political thought. And finally, it is argued that people are entitled to their own opinion, 
And you have to be respectful and tolerant of someone else's opinion if you want them to be tolerant of yours. The only way we can explain and compare opinions is by being tolerant of everyone else's. And you have to be tolerant of other, of other ideas if you want people to be tolerant of your ideas. Regarding the arguments opposed to political tolerance, these would, in, sense, in a sense, disagree with the word tolerance. Tolerance in itself is an idea. It's not a universal truth. And therefore it can be disagreed with. And therefore, a lack of political tolerance isn't an intrinsic violation of a political absolutism. Instead, tolerism is often used to provide an excuse for outdated, radical and generally bad views, such as ideologies that include racism, homophobia and more. For example, fascism, under the pretense of a political ideology, contains many racist and homophobic views. Tolerance also prevents the formation of fully developed and operating political ideas, as if all political opinions and decisions are based off compromise and appeasing bad views, it can prevent change and allow people with potentially harmful ideologies to maintain a, a footing in politics. This links to the idea of moral universalism, essentially that there are many core ideas which society, which almost everyone in society, can accept as right. Essentially, it's a belief that there are a set of given absolute principles which are good. And therefore, you can at least claim that aspects of ideologies are wrong and reject them, such as, for example, homophobia and racism once more. A lot of people would claim that be accepting of other views is a part of moral universalism, and therefore you can reject these ideologies without rejecting morality in itself. Furthermore, tolerance itself is a subjective idea, and people are allowed to reject an ideology and want no part in it without being forced to accept it. Essentially, if I can explain it, it is a viewpoint it is a viewpoint to want to reject an ideology totally. And you cannot claim to be tolerant if you cannot accept someone's viewpoint which is intolerant. Essentially, tolerance requires you to be tolerant of intolerant people. And this can create essentially a continuous cycle whereby tolerance is just thrown in to kind of explain it and rationalise it, and it's not a true idea, and therefore it can be rejected to a lot of people. Finally, tolerance isn't always an endpoint, but is often just a means. Tolerance isn't the key to coexisting political ideas and cooperation between individuals. Instead, we should focus on the other means that achieve this, such as the truth and honesty, and use objective means to maintain social cohesion instead of subjective means of which some would claim tolerance is one of those. Moving on now to a comparison of the main points. On the idea of do does tolerance allow or prevent change, those saying that tolerance enables change would say that the, that the coexistence of lots of ideologies prevents ideology becoming bogged down in the current popular ones. It revolves around relativism, essentially that the most popular ideology changes based on the time period, and without tolerance, only the current form of popular opinion would exist, and we would never advance. However, those on the other side would argue that there are lots of bad ideologies, and allowing them to continue to exist would be negative to the advancement of humankind. They would argue that there is essentially moral universalism, a set of ideas which are just ultimately and objectively good that we are working towards. And if we allow older ideologies that reject these ideas to continue to exist, we are actually being constrained. So both sides would say that tolerance or a lack of tolerance can allow or disallow change for different reasons. Regarding are some ideologies better than others, those who would say no and support tolerance claim that ideologies are complicated and based on an individual's perspective. There is no way to measure different ideologies, and as such, you cannot claim that your ideology is better than another one. Ideologies are relative, and they sure should be taken as relative, and cannot be immediately and objectively compared to each other, only subjectively, which is a different matter entirely. But those on the other side would claim, again, more universalism. There are objectively good aspects, at least the parts of ideologies, and as such, you can claim ideologies such as fascism, which endorse arguably negative entities, should not be accepted and can be claimed to be worse than other ideologies. 
Regarding is political tolerance a form of tolerance? Those who say yes would argue from two standpoints, essentially. The first is that you cannot claim to be tolerant, as liberals are, when you yourself are intolerant of other ideologies. You have to be tolerant of intolerant people to be tolerant. The liberals in themselves are often hypocrites in that regard, and therefore political tolerance is a form of tolerance. On the other side, however, they would say that tolerance should only extend to actions or views which don't impact other people. Political ideologies have a massive impact on other people because they often form the backbone of how politicians make decisions. So, for example, if someone chooses to be a homosexual, you should be tolerant of that because it doesn't affect you. However, if a certain ideology is present in government, that does affect you because it influences decision-making. And therefore, political tolerance is essentially going beyond, if we look at John Stuart Mill's harm principle, it does not fit into this harm principle because political ideology affects other people and therefore you aren't required to be tolerant of it. But then on the point of what is tolerance, those in favour of tolerance claim that tolerance is a necessary part of social cohesion and coexistence and therefore it has to exist in order to peacefully maintain different viewpoints. It also helps to rationalise the complexity of human thought and individualism and therefore it exists to serve people. However, those on the other side would say that tolerance itself is an idea and people shouldn't be forced to follow it. You cannot force people to be tolerant and therefore it's not wrong at times to be intolerant. Although this wouldn't really link to liberals because they support tolerance, this is just for people who outright reject tolerance entirely. And finally, the differing opinions on liberals themselves because they are often the focal point of all of this. Those in favour of political tolerance may claim that liberals are in fact intolerant because they reject any viewpoint which diverges from their own and uses tolerance and intolerance as an excuse to alienate and ostracise people who don't conform to their viewpoint, thereby often making liberals the least intolerant of anyone. However, on the other side, once again they're pointing to moral universalism, essentially the idea that other ideologies are intolerant. For example, not liking homosexuality is an intolerant act, and therefore these ideology, ideologies should be rejected. Actual life choices and ideologies are different, and therefore should be treated differently. Ultimately, one view on political tolerance comes down to their own insight on the issue. If it is an aspect of high importance, then people are more likely to advocate for tolerance than those who think tolerance in itself is an idea and not as important. Tolerance itself also has many degrees. While this episode has gone over the two far ends in the interest of time, essentially pro-tolerance and against tolerance, these arguments could just as easily be put into being intolerant of parts of ideologies. For example, a liberal may not reject all of conservatism, but may perhaps reject the social aspect, for example, opposing, often opposing homosexuality and the use of um, recreational drugs, for example. Furthermore, there is a link to morality, if it is universal and you support universal morality, it is easier to reject tolerance as there are a given set of definitive good values which have to be enforced. But more relativists would argue you cannot claim your ideology is better and therefore tolerance is necessary. Political tolerance is a complicated issue and in the most simple form essentially just stems down to how important the idea of tolerance in the context of politics actually is to an individual. While this is a complicated issue, I hope I've done my best to explain it in the short time I have. I'm a bit busy this week because I've just been to university, hence why this is a bit shorter. But again, what are your thoughts on tolerance? Was there anything I missed, got wrong, could do better? Let me know in the comments or on Twitter. And be sure to check back on Friday, although this week it may be late. I keep an eye, it should be, it will definitely be done by the end of the week and should be on Friday for the different opinions regarding applying political tolerance to the workings of government and political actions. Thank you for listening and I hope to see you all soon.